Hey again guys and welcome back once again five packages in front of me it's time for a mailbag video first one up is this one here from Amazon I'm expecting this to be related to something on the last mailbag let's see if I can open it here it's quite heavy and dense oh yeah exactly what I thought it would be it is a 12 volt power supply so AC input 110 to 220 volts plus or minus 15 percent output is 12 volts 30 amps uh, won't be able to test it up to 30 amps Ooh, there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a ding there um, it has a shielded sort of uh, terminals here with the markings so we've got uh, voltage positive, voltage negative, uh, ground, neutral, and live. Terminal block's a little iffy. That's all right. Got my uh, the switch here. It's set to 110 volts, which is what we have here in Canada. And uh, it's got a little cooling fan in here. In my experience, these cooling fans are quite loud. So I might actually modify this at some point to uh, accept a much bigger, like a 120 mil fan or something across the top here. But yeah, for now, uh, I'm going to have to test this to make sure it works. If it works, then uh, I won't send it back to Amazon. And then in a future video, probably coming very soon, um, I'm going to uh, put load on here and see how the voltage fluctuates. And also I'm going to install some LEDs on my workbench over on that side, which will be available in uh, super early access to my Patreon uh, patrons. And um, to the rest of you, maybe a month later. So let's get this plugged in. I think I've gathered all the supplies I need. I've got my um, relatively uh, safe AC voltage test station here. And it's got flying leads at the end. And that's specifically to test things like this. So the labels here show uh, ground, neutral, live. And on my little setup here, my... Ground is the red, neutral is the white, and live is the black. So white and black are the same as in the in the walls here in North America, live and neutral. And the last conductor happened to be red. Now, this is plugged in, but it's not turned on, and also my foot is not on the switch. So these are relatively touch, safe to touch, but um, obviously use common sense. If you're not comfortable with uh, AC voltage, just don't mess with it. How about that? I'm uh, semi comfortable, so I semi mess with it. I, um, I'm perfectly fine when things are unplugged. I'm also perfectly fine um, when I don't have to touch the device to turn it on or turn it off in the case of anything going wrong. So that's why I built that little uh, test unit this guy here and uh, yeah it's not a you know cliff quick test because I didn't have a hundred dollars US to throw onto it but it does work so neutral is here and I think that compared to just uh, shoving wires into an outlet I think I have several uh, orders of safety magnitude more than that and so I'm good with that. And also this here, uh, this cable that I'm plugging in is actually running through the GFCI as well. So I think, I think I'm pretty good. There's a fuse, low, actually low current fuse. Maybe, I don't remember how many amps, but not very much. Okay, so take these guys away. This is plugged in. Now the first three here, one, two, three, are positive. The next three are negative. I just have a set of uh, grow LEDs. They're just 50/50 LEDs. Um, I just picked whatever out of the out of the box. I just want to see how it uh, how it acts. So I'm going to put the positive over here and the negative over here. And these are actually adjustable. You can adjust the voltage over on this pot here. But uh, I want to see what happens first. Actually, yeah, we'll go. Uh, we'll do it loaded because I already screwed these in, and then unloaded after. 
Uh, also, a quick tip, I have one of these power supplies to power my uh, RC battery charger. So be careful not to uh, twist too hard on these bolts because you're going to break the plastic casing underneath. Okay, so time to flick on my tester and I will now hit the switch. Now this thing does not have a switch so whenever you give it power it turns on. So here it goes, three, two, one. Okay, immediately the LEDs come on, that's good. This is a moderate load, I would, I would say only an amp or, or two, something like that. 12.14, uh, so factory adjusted reasonably well, it's good. I can uh, tweak that and drop it down, see, 11 something. There we go, let's say 1208. So I got uh, 12 volts pretty exactly on there. I will let go of the pedal, turning this off. So there it goes, the voltage is bleeding. And then carefully, I'm going to take the load off here. Okay, let's see how well it regulates, because now I'm going to turn this on with no load and see if we get close to that um, figure. 1208, I mean, it's it's perfect. Thing is perfect. The fan has not ramped up even with this um, this load on it. So, yeah, I'm going to have to do heavier load testing on this to figure out if it's any good at all. And if you want to see that, make sure you're subscribed. But for now, we can go on to the next one. Next one up is this expansion board module and 0118975 times two. I ordered this in uh, March, halfway through March, and it came in uh, early May, $2.36. Pretty sure there's two items in there. Um, that's Canadian. So yeah, uh, things were a little messed up here because of the coronavirus. So these shipping times, they are what they are. Uh, they could have been better, it could have been worse. No idea. All right, those are some things. Let's uh, zoom in and take a look at these. So these things are micro USB breakout boards. And the reason I wanted these is because uh, micro USB is such a convenient connector to be able to bring five volts into prototype projects. And also for amateurs, it's very hard to solder these tiny little pins. So I got these adapters for dirt cheap. They were, you know, more or less a buck for, um, for five, and I guess, you know, two something for 10. And so I can add five volts to like either breadboards or um, prototypes or anything, you know, you bring in the five volts from the wall and then you can just boost it or buck it as needed. These things are pretty cheap. I am looking for some USB type C ones, but I have far fewer USB C cables and the connectors are far more expensive on those. It'll come, but for now with the coronavirus stuff, I'm gonna play with these. Next one up is this one, which interestingly enough came from Wish Post. Weird, but anyways. Um, screen display times one is the description. And this was quite expensive. Um, took two months to get here, exactly, and uh, almost $12. So the only reason I can buy these expensive things, I'm sure Pile of Stuff seeing this, he's having a heart attack right now, but uh, is because of the generosity of my Patreon patrons. So thanks a lot, guys. Let's open it up, see what's inside. Ooh, let's take a closer look at this. So this here should be a um, USB tester for testing a quick charge specifications. So basically in a uh, previous mailbag I got uh, these guys here and you guys called me a chicken for not plugging my phone into some random uh, Chineseium piece of equipment. Um, so this guy is what is going to be plugged into that in the future. So yeah, this guy is supposed to be able to negotiate quick charge. Oh, they've got a little button under there. So maybe that's how you change the quick charge modes. And um, got a little OLED here. I don't like the idea of the OLED. I feel like it's going to be too dark, but whatever, I can deal with that. So let's plug it in and see what happens here. This is an Apple charger. I don't have an iPhone anymore. Oh, of course, it's always the wrong way, isn't it? 
Okay, do you guys see that on camera? Just barely. Really, you guys don't see it well, but it's there. All right, so that's a beautiful little OLED display. That's really cool. Okay, so, wow. So it's outputting uh, 5.07 volts, uh, no current, 22.6 degrees Celsius. It tells you the temperature? That's insane. Let me try to reconfigure the lights so you guys can actually see this. If the focus is not quite right, uh, you'll have to forgive me. This is as good as I can get it. And it just so happens that I need to charge my camera battery. So I swapped the battery and now I have a load to test this on. But um, yeah, let me just uh, show you around here. So you got um, volts, you got uh, volts and current. You've got, um, not sure what this is for, the M and the M. Don't, no idea. So you got the amp hour. Oh, you've got a number, milli amp hours and milli watt hours possibly. This is the amount of time it's been plugged in for, I'm guessing. Something about a no uh, temperature. You've got uh, watts and resistance. So let me plug in my camera battery charger. Aftermarket, of course see what happens oh sorry if the focus changes just really hard to film in twilight like this so apple's charger it looks like it's topping out at 1.1 or 1.2 amps the voltage sunk way down 4.61 volts um, you see here it's charging at five and a half watts that's good i think it's only rated five watts anyway um, and there we go. Oh, look, it shows it's the 1.0 Apple standard. Temperature is rising and you've got a 3.9 ohm load. I'm guessing that's just calculated based on uh, the volts and the amps. So this is incredible. This is a great tool. And I think it's just, just bright enough that I can lower the lights like this and um, test some devices. Yeah, let me know what you think. Should I go around my house, take all my USB chargers, and I've got lots, uh, first party and third party, and test to see which one's the best. Next up, we have this uh, Chonky Boy. It's quite big and quite heavy. $9.90, again, really expensive. Thank you to my patrons. Um, March 24th and arrived May 4th so yeah may the 4th be with you what do you think it is there's no description uh, when these things come uh, orange connects they come through Canada Post and so the descriptions are gone I think they ship them to the warehouse and that warehouse is in uh, Mississauga and then from there ship them to me Any electronics um, enthusiasts, favorite day, the day when the breadboards arrive. So yeah, I was running low on these things. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Ten new breadboards. Um, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, thank you. But 10 new breadboards because I tend to prototype things a lot more than I make videos on. And uh, those prototypes, I want to come back to them from time to time. And uh, yeah, I tend to leave them on breadboard. I do need to de-breadboard some, but uh, not at this moment. I just feel like I needed to buy them. And they're cheaper to buy in 10 packs. So... That's what I did. Look okay. Let's see if we can shove a lead into them. I right, got one of these guys, one of my fused leads. Does it go in? Yeah, goes in. What about these guys? DuPont? Yeah, goes in. Um, some of you guys probably watched uh, Julian Eilert um, actually take one of these apart to take a look at what it looks like. 
And since I'm curious, you guys might be curious. I also might be stabbing myself here. Let me work on that. Let me pull one of these out and show you what it looks like. And so if you've ever wondered what the connectors look like inside of breadboard, they're all slightly different. Some of them have better tunneling than this. And by tunneling, I mean just the um, angle up here that will sort of uh, funnel, I guess funneling or tunneling, I'm not sure, that will uh, funnel the wire in. So basically when you press a wire into a breadboard, can't do this looking at the camera, but you see how that end kind of opens up to accept the wire? Well, this is actually what holds your breadboard, your connections together. And it's important to note that it's not the bottom here. Your point is not to bottom out a wire. Your point is to actually have them touch those contacts near the top. I mean, you can bottom out a wire for sure, but for the most part, if you look at this DuPont, it won't even make it all the way in. So yeah, sometimes you'll find um, extremely cheap breadboards won't have very good uh, funneling or tunneling like that. But honestly, I just buy the cheapest ones I can possibly find. And I've yet to have a problem. I've had like a couple stubborn rows on a few breadboards, but nothing I couldn't contend with. And last, but hopefully not least, is this one here. This was a $1.98, um, March 26th to May the 4th. Let's see what's inside. Oh, well, that's pretty closely related to what I just got. Actually, I think it's from the same seller. I wonder why they didn't put it in the same envelope. So these are simply um, breadboard jumpers, and actually I got a, a bunch of them. So I'm always looking for my breadboard jumpers wherever I, whatever I do. And now I've got a whole bunch more. I still need to come up with a solution um, for storing these. And I do have um, the other kinds. These are just male to male. I have female to female and male to female on the way as well. So expect that in the future mailbag videos. But yeah. These things are so useful to have around, I just can never find them because I don't have an easy way to organize them. So that's going to be in an upcoming video, but since it's a infrastructure um, project, it'll probably be super early access on Patreon. And so all these goodies today make up today's mailbag. And just once again, a special thank you to my Patreon patrons. A link to a search where you can find all of this stuff will be in the description below. And I want to thank all of you guys for coming by and watching.